This Saturday night and Sunday is the holiday of Shavuot, where we culminate the seven weeks of counting the Omer from the second day of Passover until this incredible moment where the Jewish people are standing around Mount Sinai. The Ish Echad Belev Echad, with one heart as one soul, which, as you know very well, for the Jews, it's really hard. Could you imagine 600,000 people there and there was no arguing? Unbelievable. The holiday itself, even though it's one of the three major holidays of the year, it's not very well known. I would say from the three major festivals, it's the least known. And one of the traditions of the holiday is to eat dairy. So my question today is, Why do we eat dairy on Shavuot? I mean, I know many people aren't complaining. Everybody loves their cheesecakes and cannolis and all those fun dairy desserts. But aside from the fact that it's nice to have a change of pace from all the meat and chicken on Jewish holidays, during the summertime, it's obviously nice to have ice cream, and it's hard to say no to those yummy desserts, also the vegetarians, They feel more included. I'm not sure about those Jewish lactose intolerant people, but it's always nice to have others that are included. So why the custom to eat dairy? So there are a bunch of different reasons. Number one, all baby mammals, humans included, drink milk at birth. Until they're weaned and capable of eating other foods for nourishment, but it all starts with the mother's milk. This holiday of Shavuot is like our infancy, where we're just starting out in Torah, and eating dairy reminds us that an early start to our Torah learning and observance is so important. Here's the second reason. You like numbers and gematria, right? So this is one for you. The Hebrew word for milk is chalav. Chet is eight. Lamed is 30. The bet is two. That adds up to 40. And 40 is important because Moses went up the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And actually, if you think about it, Givina, Hebrew for cheese, is 70. And there are 70 faces or 70 facets to Torah learning. Here's another one. The Jews got the laws of kosher. And starting to deal with kosher, the slaughtering and the salting of the meat and having the right kosherized utensils was too complicated for the holiday underway. So milk preparation is much simpler from a kosher perspective. Dairy can often be eaten without being cooked, for example. So it was easier from a kosher standpoint on that first Shavuot to eat dairy, and it became a tradition thereafter. Here's another one. If you're into languages and puns and that kind of thing, you might appreciate this one. Har Gav Nunim was another name for Sinai, and it sounds similar to Gvina, so the Hebrew word for cheese. So the key ingredient in pizza or ziti or lasagna or blintzes or so many other dairy foods. How about this? The shape of some Shavuot dairy foods can have a significance as well. Think of a blintz, a wrapped food that contains a delicious cheese mix within, like when the Torah scroll wrapped in a cover or the layers of a good lasagna represent the multiple layers within the Torah learning, the surface explanations and deeper and even deeper layers of meanings. This reason that I'm going to talk about is actually halachic. We eat two meals on Shavuot, one meat and one dairy, to symbolize the written and the oral Torah. And by eating two meals, we need two separate hamotzis, which is like the two breads that were offered only on Shavuot. Or how about this one? Most proteins need some kind of heat preparation so they're edible. Meat or chicken has to be cooked or baked or broiled or grilled or or fried. The same with fish, at least before the advent of sushi, that is. But milk is different. Milk products are edible without heat preparation. Cheeses, uh, yogurts, butters, they all have to do with uh, separation and time. They're activated or they're enhanced by enzymes or bacteria. Other proteins need much more of an active role to make something out of it. But with milk, the product sort of takes its own course. Torah is kind of like that too. If we're open to the words of Torah, if we give it time 
and the right conditions, we can just let it work its magic. It'll transform within us. Things happen when we let things we learn blossom and develop more fully. May we accept the Torah, the Shavuot, the Simcha, the Pnimiot, which is with joy and with this inner understanding, this inner dimension that we never had before, and we appreciate it in a way that we've never appreciated it before, and may it truly, truly internalize our hearts, our souls, and our minds. I'm Rabbi Yisroel Bernath, Chag Sameach, and Shabbat Shalom.